another dimension. A dimension of insight. A dimension of understanding. You are entering a place where reality collides with truth. There are no limits. There are no boundaries. This is our planet radio. things that had to happen. Um, this hour, I'm very pleased to have our guest on finally. And um, this actually, tonight's show was, uh, this hour, not premeditated. It was completely spontaneous on my part because all day today I was just grieving over what is going on in the world as um, this U.S. president, the man who was supposedly the change president and the president who was supposed to be the bulwark for um, liberal values uh, has gone to the Senate and asked to go into Syria to do intervention. And uh, again, my intuitive sense tells me that this is a horrible mistake, that this is uh, leading very treacherously towards what many people believe is the final links in the Middle East domination by the United States. And um, as I was contemplating all of this, I, I had an article that popped up on my email from our guest tonight. And uh, so I called him up and I asked him if he would come on and he said yes. And so I'm very privileged to introduce to this audience for the first time our guest, Dr. Alfred Lambermont Weber. Alfred, good evening and welcome to Off Planet Radio Live. You know, I, I'm very, very happy to to be here and and so happy that my email popped up. It's an example of synchronicity happening. <laughs> Absolutely. No, this was, um, you know, <laughs> uh, you like, probably like you, I get a lot of email. This one popped up in my eyes. And when that happens, I try to pay attention because I think universe is telling me something. And uh, your article goes right to the heart of uh, a lot of what I ranted about at the beginning of the show tonight. But this U.S. strike against Syria, your article, which is uh, posted out at PressTV.ir, U.S. strike against Syria war crime under U.N. charter, uh, goes right to the heart of it. Um, Alfred First off, just by way of introduction, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do with exopolitics.com and your very special set of skills that have led you down a path that many people um, in your profession would never go near. Yeah, sure. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm a futurist, and um, among my various tasks over the years, uh, I was uh, the director of the uh, 1977 proposed Carter White House extraterrestrial communication study. 
Mm-hmm. And um, among other things now, I'm a judge on the Kuala Lumpur War Crimes Tribunal, and among the cases that we've heard, we found uh, Tony Blair and George W. Bush guilty of war crimes, the highest, uh, the Nuremberg level war crime, war of aggression for their illegal invasion of Iraq in 2003. So those, that, that's the kind of varied, varied agenda that I, that I have. Now, uh, part of the work of uh, exopolitics.com goes into exactly what exopolitics is because now we're talking about the legal aspects of treaties and relationships with extraterrestrial species. Can you uh, kind of fill in the blanks there a little bit for us? Sure. Uh, broadly speaking, exopolitics is a social science. It's one of the newest of the social sciences. It's like anthropology, except instead of studying one species of hominids on one planet, namely our planet, exopolitics uh, studies relations among intelligent civilizations in the multiverse. And uh, we now have approximations of of uh, the number of universes in the multiverse and of the number of intelligent civilizations in our universe alone. And so together, that's a humongous number. This actually kind of connects a little bit to what our guest was talking about the first hour, which goes into multidimensionalism and the fact that our flat space perceptions of our, our world, our world view, are being altered now on a regular basis because of what we're coming to understand, although obviously the collective consensus still doesn't receive that. Um, What do you see occurring in your sphere of endeavor and influence in terms of bringing forward these ideas that, you know, let's face it, we talk about things on these shows that are part of our work, part of our understanding, that are not part of mainstream thought yet and that tends to make us sometimes almost pariah among uh, the more mainstream of our our associates how are you bringing these issues to the forefront specifically in the areas of anthropology and law well um, uh, there are a number of initiatives that we are involved in uh, first of all, together uh, with a, a cadre of, of courageous individuals, five of whom I have uh, interviewed uh, personally and worked with personally, some of them uh, for more than a decade. These are people who have been involved in, in the uh, U.S. Um, effort to explore and settle Mars um, uh, and our Mars whistleblowers, and it's because of them we know that this program exists. One of the efforts that, that we're developing in, in exopolitics is a Mars Protection Treaty. And that treaty, uh, which we're proposing at the world level in the U.S. to be entered into with the Martian human society uh, would be to uh, establish the principle that Mars as a celestial body belongs to the Martians and uh, that would resist and and prohibit uh, the U.S. colonization of Mars, which is now going on covertly. Uh, If there is a, you know, one of the largest and most expensive uh, uh, taxpayer-funded projects, which has been going on uh, surreptitiously for maybe almost 40 years, is the U.S. uh, exploration and now settlement of Mars. And uh, the establishment of colonies there with a purpose under international law and space law to claim Mars, uh, you know, just to put it in common parlance that every American can understand to make Mars the 51st state. 
And that uh, would include all of the uh, wealth of Mars, the mineral wealth, all the wealth that comes with a an entire planet. And uh, uh, that's a a covert project which is on which is ongoing now. The U.S. has uh, always, being a relatively young nation, has always has grown by the doctrine of manifest destiny, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, that that's how it annexed Puerto Rico, how it attempted to annex uh, Cuba unsuccessfully, and the Philippines, how it annexed Guam, and that's how it acquires new territory. Now, uh, in about 40 years ago, it the U.S. developed uh, uh, certain advanced technologies, quantum access technologies, such as time travel and teleportation. And uh, there are a variety of technologies that we know about because whistleblowers from that program have come forward. Um, the most and, and high profile of which, of course, is Andrew Bashago, who yes. we've, uh, I've interviewed before. You can go back to the archives at OffPlanetRadio.com and hear the interview that we did with Andrew. That was back in uh, 2011, I believe. Yes, and and Andy now is uh, waging a campaign for the U.S. presidency in 2016 on a platform of um, uh, making teleportation public, and uh, and and that's a that's a program that we all should support uh, be, because that's a program that that would literally bring our planet into the 21st century, and that's a technology teleportation uh, that has been used along with its sister, time travel, uh, ha- has been used to explore uh, at least Mars, perhaps other uh, adjacent celestial bodies, and uh, is being used now to colonize it secretly uh, on behalf of a narrowly controlled definition of the national security state uh, which in turn is politically and economically controlled by a corporate world, which in turn is narrowly controlled by 13 families or so. Yeah. In addition to that, um, the proof that we have, which has all been suppressed, both of life on Mars and the presence of extraterrestrial beings, even on our own planet, the suppression largely goes to the heart of something else that you, you've maybe touched on, and that is the liberation of the concepts of free energy, which would effectively liberate us from the same people who are now uh, planning okay. once more to wage an incursion into another Middle Eastern country. Yes, right. Um now we we have been pinned down because uh, it was the same folks, actually the the Brotherhood of Death, otherwise known as the Illuminati, otherwise known as Skull and Bones. I mean, these are kind of interlocking groups who um, who uh, got us into the petroleum nuclear civilization that we are in by a variety of dirty tricks around the turn of the 19th to the 20th centuries. And they have uh, assiduously blocked uh, all of the technologies that would have allowed us to leapfrog uh, this zero level uh, in, in, the, in, the Car- in the Kardashev scale. Of a zero level civilization is one that eats its own planet to, to survive and most zero level civilizations self-destruct before they get to a one level civilization which lives on the energy of space and its solar system uh, and, and so we find ourselves in that position 
where through the technology of false flags, we're just, you know, in the same, doing the same insane thing over and over and over again. Uh, whereas um, there are available free energy technologies and um, breakthrough quantum access technologies like transportation that can really make this a paradise planet. So um, uh, this latest gambit on Syria uh, is uh, we we really reached kind of a a uh, I don't know what analogy. There are many uh, uh, analogies you you can use. A fork in the road. We've 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 reached a a point of no return. We've reached a uh, uh, a point where it's breakdown, breakthrough. It's either permanent breakdown or breakthrough to a level a next level. Mm-hmm. And. Um, uh, I can walk you through uh, what I saw was the were some of the steps coming out of what the what the sort of breakdown oriented governance institutions of of, of the USA are doing right now. If that's helpful. Yeah, no, that actually goes to the heart of of, of everything that we're talking about tonight, Alfred. So yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, well, uh, over the past several days, I've been asked by international media, because I'm an international lawyer and also a war crimes judge on the Kuala Lumpur War Crimes Tribunal, to define this situation in in terms of 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 international law, and it's clear that um, any strike by by the U.S. <clears throat> uh, would be prohibited uh, by any strike by the U.S. that would not be approved by the U.N. Security Council would be prohibited by the um, United Nations Charter, uh, Article 2, Section 4, and its prohibition on it on conducting aggressive war, which is the Nuremberg level war crime. That's where they they set out that 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 what the Nazis, what the Third Reich did was to conduct a conspiracy to to launch war on the world. That's aggressive war and that's the highest level crime. And uh so uh and that and that and World War Two, I think uh some of the Estimates run between 25 and 1 million dead, plus countless damage. Um, and so, what I said today, and I'll and I'll run through why I said it, is that it, it appears as though the 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 strategy that U.S. President Barack Obama is is acting out now is that he's really earning. The, the appellation or the title, the lawless one. And um, that's, that's for the following reasons, because he is setting up himself up to violate not only U.S. law and the U.S. Constitution, but international law uh, in the prohibition against uh, fighting aggressive war. Com- committing, uh, launching, and and aggressive war. Uh, the current circumstance as we speak tonight, September 4th, 2013, is that the uh, <coughs> Committee on Foreign Relations of the U.S. Senate voted 10 to 7 in a very divided um, vote to approve uh, in a limited Hello, hello. Yeah, hello. I'm here. Yeah, we're yeah. here. Yeah, we're there. Here. There was this music that that suddenly intervened. I didn't know what was going on. Oh wow! Well, no, I didn't hear it. No, no there's yeah, nothing. Yeah, I, I, I did hear. Yeah, I, I'm getting, I'm getting uh, interference. Regularly interrupted and hacked mm-hmm. by the forces of 
the yeah. Illuminati. So yeah. please bear with me. And and um, uh, uh, so now uh, the that vote goes to the full U.S. Senate, which will happen on on or after Monday, September 9th, when the full U.S. Senate comes back. However, what the uh, what Obama has gone to the U.S. Congress for is under the War Powers Act of 1973. And here it gets kind of complex because having gone to the U.S. Congress, now Obama has to get the approval of both the U.S. Senate and House of Representatives so that when the U.S. Senate comes back, it will approve, uh, it will have to vote on, and if it approves, uh, if the resolution approved by the committee, uh, uh, which gives 90 days and then John McCain introduce a, uh, a condition on the resolution stating that it has to change the momentum on the ground, whatever that, that means, then it has to go to the House of Representatives. Now, even though Speaker John Boehner has stated that he is with the resolution, the House members are not with the resolution, are not going along with uh, their leader, and the Republicans have a majority there. So it is by no means certain that the House of Representatives will vote for the resolution. Now, if they, if the House of Representatives doesn't, then the resolution fails. Now, what Obama stated today in Stockholm was that he thought that even if the U.S. Congress does not approve the resolution, he still has the power to go forward. And what he's saying is this, is that under the um, uh, under the the uh, the under the war power. I, excuse me. Could could you just uh, mute your things when when you type? Because it, it, it's it's kind of hard for me to keep That's a thread right. on, on on these complex legal strains. I'm I'm really trying to go ahead, Alfred. I, I'm muting out. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And and uh, um and. This is a, a very important point, and I was on a radio station today that couldn't get it and kind of maxed out and kind of joked me off. And, man, we are dealing with the lawless one. I don't know whether you all have seen that video which was put out, which interpreted uh, a certain chapter of Luke, the Gospel of Luke, Mm-hmm. where it said that Jesus had seen Satan as lightning from heaven. Right, right, yeah. And and then and then it interpreted lightning from heaven in Aramaic is pronounced Barack Obama. Yeah, I've seen that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm saying that for the benefit of the listeners. We are not dealing with an ordinary intelligence here, folks. No. We are dealing with a challenging demonic intelligence whose goal is to incinerate the world. Well, okay. we have a we have this issue with this president. We don't know who he is. We don't know where he comes from. I'm saying this we publicly, not we in terms of those of us, you know, who have yeah. a little bit more insider knowledge about Obama or Barry Sotero. But this president was foisted upon us as <laughs> Pardon the term, it's not racist, a dark horse candidate. He came out of nowhere as a junior senator from Illinois and was basically swept into office in a wave of emotion, a a great, great amount of ceremony. And yet the American people know nothing about this man. And well, well, there you you can go. Your listeners can go to exopolitics.com. Yes. And look at a 55 slide. PowerPoint presentation that's on line there that is entitled How Manchurian Candidate Barry Satoro, an Intelligence Legend, was transformed, uh, 
uh, intelligence led since Barack Obama was created. More than 22,000 persons have viewed it. And we finally cracked the secret of how Barack Obama was created in 1970 using retrocausation and time travel technology. And he was literally created out of thin air. And we even have the raised seal court document from a court in British Columbia where he did his name check name change on October 14th, 1982, after the CIA had assassinated his putative father, which is not his birth father, a Kenyan civil servant named Barack Obama Sr. in 1982, so that because dead men tell no tales. So we, we have cracked those, those puzzles, and now 22,000 people know it. And, and so uh, the forces of light are on the case. But this is a very dangerous time. And, and what I'd like to do is get through this legal presentation so that yes. your listeners know what's on tap for right now, for next week. Okay, so next week, what's vital is whether or not the House of Representatives approves the resolution. If they approve it, that means that that Obama has the approval under the War Powers Resolution, and it means that the U.S. Legislature, U.S. Congress, has given him the approval to go forward with the attack. But that doesn't mean that it's legal under international law because it remains unlawful and it remains a war of aggression under, under international law. And to, today, Vladimir Putin came out and the Russians handed over to the United Nations a 100-page report showing that the gas, poison gas that was released on the Syrian people belong to the type of canisters and the type of gas that the Syrian opposition was using. And there's a lot more evidence. In other words, the CIA backed uh, rebels. Right, right. Yeah. i.e. that supports that this is a false flag. So, so, such that such that there are no grounds for this going forward. There, 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 such that the, the, Vladimir Putin said he, he would not stop it at the UN level if there were proof. But at the same time, he produced a 100 page report showing that it's a false flag, whereas the US has produced the same type of flimsy generalizations that Colin Powell produced in the UN in 2003 when they said that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction and they started the genocidal invasion of Iraq, the war of aggression. So we're in that exact same posture now. Now, if next week, and, and this week what what Obama said in Stockholm was this. He said, I'm going to go ahead regardless of whether I get the U.S. Congress approval or not. Now, if, if, if the Republicans, if the, if the House of Representatives next week does not approve the resolution, then Obama does not have the approval of the U.S. Congress. And only two presidents have gone ahead without an attack, without the use, uh, without the approval of the U.S. Congress. And that was Reagan when he said aid to the Contras in the 80s in Nicaragua. And in 1999, Bill Clinton bombed Kosovo with DU weapons. Uh, and in a genocidal bombing that he has yet to pay for, he and his wife, his, his wife Hillary Clinton, promoted that genocide publicly and pushed her husband to do it. So what we have is that, is that Obama has said, I'm a lawless president. It doesn't matter to me 
what the U.S. Congress does because I have the authorization. And what his lawyer is going to say is that the War Powers Act reads such that all I have to do is give Congress notice within 48 hours that I'm invading and I can only stay 60 days. But the problem with that argument is, and I'm arguing as an international lawyer and judge on behalf of the world community right now on this program, so that everybody's aware of the law, is that the problem with that argument is that Obama already gave up that argument because he said, I'm going back to the U.S. Congress. Therefore, he put himself under the jurisdiction of the U.S. Congress, and when they said no, it means under the law, no. So therefore, he's starting to earn the title of the lawless one, which is the title denominated to Satan, the lightning from heaven that in Aramaic is pronounced Barack Obama. So for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, these were the words of Jesus in the New Testament. If you want to watch an Antichrist figure manifest this week and next, that's what's happening here on planet Earth. Now, Putin is no fool. So what he said, and he's meeting Obama on Thursday in Russia at the summit, and what he said is, hey, no, never mind, because Russia has its own plan. So when the U.S. then bombs, goes to bomb Syria because Obama has said that he's going to do it despite what, you know, he's just lawless, then Russia has said that it may come in and back Syria and it could take out Saudi Arabia because Saudi Arabia pr provided the, the nerve gas that knocked out the Syrians. And Saudi Arabia is a U.S. major ally there. And then we have the scenario in the Bible of Gog and Magog and the Chinese get dr drawn in. Mm -hmm. And the U.S. homeland is going to be devastated. And that's just what the soul of Barack Obama wants. So people better get on the phone and on the horn and start waking up. That's my message today. And what is the waking up? The waking up is called impeachment because if Barack Obama, if, if next week the House of Representatives goes ahead and it says, no, we do not approve this resolution. Therefore, the resolution fails and Obama goes ahead in despite of it, that is a high, high crime and misdemeanor under the impeachment article of the Constitution. And Obama can be impeached and will be impeached by votes in the House of Representatives. And the better get on the horn to have the House of Representatives impeach him in emergency session. And that's my sincere recommendation as a counsel for the people of the United States and the people of the world. Alfred, let me ask you a question, though. Is there a will within the Congress or even within the American public at this point to impeach Barry Sotero regardless of what he does? I mean, we have proof of a falsified birth certificate coming out of Hawaii. We have uh, just numerous gaffes and misdeeds that have occurred over the course of his presidency so far. And you're quite truthfully, much more serious than anything that ever put Bill Clinton in front of Congress on an articles of impeachment. Do you believe that it's still possible in this country for us to bring up the will to impeach this president? Yeah. Uh, on this issue... If he goes forward and invades with no congressional approval, that's something, given the fact that 60% of the U.S. public is against it, and that legally would be an impeachable offense, then all of the other, you know, 
crimes of the lawless one are gravy. But you've got to find something on which everybody agrees, agrees because there's so much disinformation on where Obama was born and which, which certificate is this and that and the other thing that it's hard to get a political consensus there around that high crime and misdemeanor, which is going to put this away it, uh, for a bill of impeachment and a vote in the House. And, and so that is, that is the only way that you're going to get rid of this president is by impeachment. I mean, I'm talking legal way. Do you see our incursion into Syria, Alfred, as the final leg of conquest of the Middle East and also as the fuse that ignites World War III or what we might even call uh, in biblical terms, Armageddon. Oh yeah, the what what it is is that the satanic Illuminati, who are following a depopulation and ecocidal policy, uh, have been planning this. I mean, Armageddon is out on contract. <laughs> you know, these guys are making bucks off of it, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and yeah. and and uh, now. The, the so-called Arab Spring, uh, the fall of these countries like dominoes, the methodology of going in and just shredding companies, countries like Libya, where you formerly everybody had a middle class standard of living. Yes. And, and, you know, free education, the whole bit. And now it's a lawless place you know, where, where there's no law and order and, you know, just like a nightmare, that is part of the synagogue of Satan, the satanic Illuminati agenda, the greater Israel. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. You, you know, it all comes down to, to the, the, the original war crime, which is the, which is the ethnic cleansing of Palestine in 1947, 48. Yes, I was going to ask read, you about that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. You, you can read the book called The Ethnic Cleansing of Palestine by the is, Israeli historian Pape. Yes. 1947 48. All those founders of Israel, starting with Ben Gurion, were nothing but genociders who, who uh, uh, had 7% of the land at the beginning and had 97% two years later because they just genocided entire villages and got rid of all the Palestinians. And it was called Plan Dalit, Plan D, and it's all documented. And, 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 and what they want is a Zionist planet. You know, everybody's Zionist. Ultimately, everybody's Jewish on the planet. And that's their thing. And and they're criminals and they're satanic. They're Satan worshipers. And and so uh, uh, we have ourselves a real spiritual battle. And the and the takedown of, of Iraq, the takedown of Afghanistan, the attempted, you know, take down now of Syria and Iran as the next dominoes are all part of the imposition of the greater Israel because the U S has been hollowed out by Israel and is a client state of Israel. It's the muscle. It's the enforcer of Israel. There's, there's no more U S state. There's no more U S democracy. There's nothing. It's gone. It's utterly gone. It's utterly gone. And it began in earnest with the assassination of John F. Kennedy on November 22nd, 1963, which That's is right. an act of the state of Israel. 9-11 was an act of the state of uh, Israel. All of the governments, all of the colleges and universities have been taken over by the Zionists. You go to my alma mater, Yale University, it's a Jewish Zionist. Zionist University now. They have open sex parties and stuff. They've ruined They've ruined the entire patrimony of the U.S., just like they do in all the countries. That's why they have the, the Zionists have been kicked out of countries over history. And that's, and that's what's happening now. So, well, so most, we, most people so, who... Yeah. 
No, what I was going to say is this is old material for me. I've been doing this for ten years, so it's no, no, no. Long... I, I, I'm, I, I'm speaking to your audience. Yeah, but, yeah, because uh, you and I are on the same page. But I'm articulating it for your audience. And that was not because... a critical statement either. What I'm saying yeah, yeah. is. People need to go back and look at the formation of Israel and what happened as a result even of the earliest writings, Theodore Herzl and Der Judestadt, and the funding of uh, uh, that land in Palestine by the Rothschilds to set up this state, which was a segue into World War II and out, out of World War II as well. It is the cauldron of everything that we've seen since the beginning of the 20th century. Yeah, yeah. So, so all of this, all of these dominoes are going to start playing over the next few weeks, and and yeah. uh, and there are, there are three kind of uh, uh, three or more principal figures in this in this drama at at I call the upper theater level. One is the Obama, the other is the Pope, the other is. Uh, uh, the UK throne, Prince William, up and mm-hmm. coming as first Zionist king. Uh, he, uh, you know, comes out of Rasha blood. And, and that's basically, you know, it's all fairly transparent now. But now we have to focus on proactive action that we can do. So the first proactive action that we can do, and this has to follow, if the House of Representatives, and I today, called my U.S. representative and emailed my two senators, urging them to vote against. And uh, if the House of Representatives, God willing, will vote against this and Obama, the lawless one, still goes forward, then he set himself up for articles of impeachment. And we have to immediately jump up and find, uh, find ourselves Congress people who will bring articles of impeachment and move on that because this this lawless president can only be brought down legally by impeachment at this stage. This kind of, uh, I guess, will take us into, because we've got about 10 minutes left in the show, Alfred, yeah. um, your current quest to, uh, well, we'll call it a campaign, to become the Secretary General of the United Nations. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And I guess my lead question is, do you believe at the present time the UN is a legitimate international organization or is it also part of the uh, the puppet structure of the regime? Yeah, no, the, the, the UN was established by the Rockefeller yes. Rothschilds to manage the wars and the genocides. And that's what the UN has been doing, implementing the wars and implementing the genocides. And you only have to look at how the UN facilitated the Rwanda genocide that proves that. And you have to only look at how the UN uh, stalled out any global ban or regulation or enforcement against depleted uranium weapons and the radiation genocide of the world to prove that. So, and, and right now, the nomination of a UN Secretary General requires, first of all, the approval of the UN Secretary, UN Security Council, right. where the US, Russia, China, the UK, or France can veto it, and the majority vote of the UN General Assembly with 195 nations. So. To think that I would be nominated UN Secretary General is absurd. So the only way that I could become UN Secretary General for terms starting uh, January 1st, 2017 or January 1st, 2021 is if there's just some huge blowout and, you know, we're we, we are dealing with a world transformation, right? Yeah. And, and so I put myself forward in that vein, and I put myself forward also to showcase the policies which humanity could have at a planetary level, and I put myself forward to further expose the UN and the satanic Illuminati and the international war crimes 
racketeering organization for what it is. And I've sent out about 10 or so initial key policies for a positive future. And people can go to exopolitics.com and see a complete statement of what those 10 are. And, uh, you know, the, these are policies that, that would make this, our planet, a sustainable, free, free and thriving, multidimensional world. And, and so, and they're in all areas, extra disclosure, criminalization of the war industry, crim, uh, criminal prosecution, and conviction of war crimes, racketeering organization, rest, restorative justice for war crimes victims, uh, global teleportation, new free energy technology, world debt forgiveness, reinvention of money, money is a human right, mm -hmm. social guarantees, guaranteed annual income for everybody on the planet, virtual di direct democracy, and the disestablishment of monarchies and religions worldwide. And that's just for starters. Can I can I jump in here really quickly? Go ahead, go um, Alfred, please explain to our listeners what they need to do clearly. They need to, uh, and what I think they need to do is immediately go out and contact their representatives, their congressmen, their senators, and tell them we want this president impeached. And yes. also spread this radio show that you should did with us to everyone yeah. they can because I believe if they listen to you tonight they just wake up and do what they need to do but we great. have to get the word out there and quickly yeah great and, and, and it's real easy to email or call your representative just go to house.gov house.gov there on the front page there's an app that'll take you directly to your to the website of your representative just go to Senate.gov, and I'll take you to your two senators. Good. And, Randy, there's someone else on the line with us. I can hear them. I just wanted to add that in. <laughs> I'm not too surprised. I'm actually surprised that we've managed to keep lines up with this show tonight. Yes, um, yes. And I know, Alfred, you're struggling. You get, you get blasted routinely doing radio shows and even in your private life because of uh, what you're standing up and doing. And uh, I'm watching the chat room tonight, and they're very animated. Um, this has been very well received. Um, it kind of bears out. It kind of bears out my intuition to just call you up tonight and ask you to come on at the spur of the moment, which you've been very gracious in doing, and also very gracious in sharing your passion about these things, Alfred. Um, Tell us a little bit more about what you're working on in the background, your future projects, and anything else that's going on at ExoPolitics that uh, we didn't get a chance to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I have a new book coming out in 2014. It's called Dimensions, the Ecology of the Multiverse. And it's, it's my first book since ExoPolitics that came out in 10 years ago in or actually 13 years ago in the year 2000 and basically uh the it describes the ecology of the multiverse and brings a science-based model into the true multiverse going way beyond string theory incorporating both the physical multiverse its humongous number of physical universes with the spiritual dimensions that include the afterlife, the intelligent civilization of souls, of spirit, and of God. So it's a, it's a blowout. Sounds, wow. Wow, Great. sounds amazing. Alfred, we, we, we will have you back. Um, this has been, well, my eyes are bleeding right now. Um, wow. yeah. but it's been an amazing show, and thank you so much for coming on at the last minute and for uh, thank you. Uh, sharing everything that you've done. Our guest tonight, Alfred Lambermont Weber, exopolitics.com. Go there. Look at the information. I'm going to get this show up real quick, even by yes. my standards, and get it out, blast it out. Um, let people know what's going on. Talk to people and share this with anybody you know. Time's short. We still have a window of opportunity here where we can still make a difference. 
This is Off Planet Radio. This is Off Planet Radio. I'm Randy Moggins with Chris Holly and our guest Alfred Lambermont Weber. We'll be back again next week. Pray for peace. <laughs>